Hello everyone, the recently finished Olympiad in Hungary under 16, so a lot of interesting games. And the last round was extremely interesting as well because there were two teams that were leading the competition. One was the Indian team, uh, they shared the lead together with the Iranian team and in fact it was the Iranian team which had the lead before the final round. So India was in a must-win situation and they were playing the strong team of Turkey this is how the match went. It all started very well for for the Indian team thanks to the following game by their third board Aravind Chitambaram playing with the black pieces against Sevgi Fulkan, the, um, uh, the next Turkish hope. Okay, so we have the C3 Sicilian, the Alapin Sicilian and the relatively safe line with knight f6 and then after knight e5, d4, all of these moves have been played many times before. Uh, d6, bishop c4, and this is one of the main lines in this situation. Queen t2 is also a very typical move. White wants to play queen e4, and after that maybe this bishop will come to d3, and white wants to attack on this diagonal. Black reacted with a very, um, very, I would say, unexpected move, a5. It's not very common in this situation, very rare. Uh, people are usually playing queen to b6 in this situation on bishop d7. For example, the move bishop d7 has been played by the former European champion Potkin. And then usually the game goes knight e2, queen c7, and then black is trying to regroup his forces into the center. He's not that much afraid of the bishop d3 idea because he's always having the f5 move. And even he can do f5 without the opponent threatening him with bishop to g3 so basically black is trying to create counterplay on the c and the d files in the center to deflect the opponent from attacking on the king side but in this game a5 was played so what is the point of the move of a5 well that's uh, that's a very important question to understand first of all the pawn wants to go to a4 and from a4 it is going to fix the b3 square since black wants to attack on the queen side this makes a lot of sense. He wants to play after that knight to a5 or knight to b3 and the knight can also attack the bishop on c4 sometimes. But there is another idea which is more important. Sometimes it is the rook that wants to go on a5. Just have a look. Uh, after queen e4, a4, which is the usual thing that people will do anyway, uh, white reacted here with bishop to d3. Probably there are some other interesting moves, but um, say rook e1 can be answered knight a5. And after bishop d3, there is to f5, capture knight f6. This position we have analyzed jointly, jointly with uh, Grandmaster Melicha Chian on chess.com server, the live show that happened yesterday, the 21st of, of uh, December. And then after queen h4, I thought that white has enough attacking chances, but then uh, in the quick analysis, we couldn't find exactly what can white do in this case Malik thought that this, this should be quite okay for black and indeed I couldn't find anything after this check I just saw some checks here where the king was always escaping on e7 however with the help of the computer um, then later I found the move knight c3 which means that maybe rookie one is an interesting option because the key idea behind the move knight c3 is to insert this knight into the attack and if black is not careful, let's say that he is moving back the knight, he doesn't pay attention to white's threats there is a very beautiful checkmate coming next this is this check now the king obviously cannot go into this direction because of bishop h7 check and the standard checkmate idea with the queen coming on h7 uh, well, if the bishop, if the king goes on e7, this is where the position of the knight on uh, c3 is revealed. The knight jumps on d5, we have a pin on the e file, and after king d7, this beautiful checkmate would be a very elegant finish of the game. So I suspect that the, uh, the, the whole line with a5 definitely is not a refutation of uh, the strategy for white. Uh, white just probably needed not to hurry with the move bishop d3 although bishop d3 that was played in the game is also a possibility and after f5 capture knight f6 probably this move is uh, the beginning of the problems for white instead of that move queen h4 has been played before queen e2 is an actual novelty um, but i suspect that it's a novelty that was that was made on the board not home preparation queen h4 looks much more active now the queen is hitting h7 
and white wants to finish the development. Uh, here, the other idea behind the move A4 could be revealed, and it was revealed in the predecessor. Uh, rook A5, and after Knight C3, this rook came on H5. I'm not sure how correct that idea is, because nobody, well, it's not very um, often that the rook is coming out that early, and maybe it's not that great, but well, if you want, you can study this game. This is the game Van Mille with the white pieces against Nuven uh played in Eindhoven 1986. It looks like black was in a little bit of a trouble after Queen g3, e5, de5, knight g4 check, and e6. Uh, I don't really believe in black's position here in this situation. Right, but things um, happen differently in this game because Queen e2 was too timid. And black immediately uh, revealed the power of his pieces with this nice central move, e5, which is a pawn sacrifice, but one of those pawn sacrifices that white is not really willing to take. Uh, to start with, if he captures on e5, then after knight e5, queen e5, queen takes d3, this bishop is hanging, then true, black can, white can regain the piece, but I don't really uh, like his position at the moment. Just have a look how passive his pieces are. And then b6 could be also an idea for black when if white ever captures it, there is no move bishop a6 and all of a sudden this rook on f1 is trapped. He has nowhere to go. Uh, if this is not possible, then maybe queen to c3 is another option. But then after queen g6, I would definitely prefer to have the black pieces because in situations, in positions with bishops of the different color, the activity of the bishop is what matters, and in that case, black is clearly more active. And again, we shouldn't forget about those pieces. So capturing on e5 is very risky, although maybe it was possible. Uh, there is the move bishop c4 in between check and then to take on e5. At least the bishop on d3 is not going to hang. But then after king k8 and captures, um, well, just have a look now how quickly the black pieces are coming into the action. They do look um, not so active at the moment, but since they're long range pieces, they can easily be transferred from one side of the board to the other. And first of all, we go knight g4, hitting the queen and the pawn, and creating furious threats uh, with queen c7, which will attack the pawn on h2, and it will attack the bishop on c4 at the same time. But also the knight is even attacking the pawn on f2. You will see why this is important in a moment. Queen d5, queen c7, the queen had to stick to the bishop, otherwise white will lose it. Now g3 to defend against checkmate, but then rook a5, another nice point behind the move a4, the queen is still clued to the bishop. Queen has to go to d4. Now black has plenty of interesting options, and uh, rook c5 is an option, And but I think that bishop c5 is the simplest thing. Just in four moves, black brought all his pieces out, and now he's winning the pawn on f2 with decisive attack after that. And again, have a look at those pieces. They're not doing anything. So I pretty much understand why uh, Volkan decided here to go bishop g5 rather than to take the pawn on e5. Nobody's really tempted with pawns like that. But Aravind insists he goes e4. You will have to take this pawn now because uh, it is a fork. And if you take it, he is saying to his opponent, then I'm going to win your bishop this time. If uh, bishop e7, I just take back, my knight is defended. Then if you go rook e1, then rook f4, or bishop f5, either way, I'm going to defend this knight. Well, if this is losing a piece, then white doesn't have plenty of choice. He has to give the check on c4, which he did, and then he has to es escape with the knight. But this is once again delay in the development, and black is completely finishing now his own one with tempos 9d4, give me the queen. Only move for white to avoid the fork on c2 is to go queen to d1, but then the other bishop is coming out with the tempo, and basically the game is over just in 19 moves. Black finishes the development and that's it. The threats cannot be stopped. If the queen goes to c1 in this direction, simply b5. And the bishop is trapped because it has to defend the e2 square. Rook c8 was also good, but this one is immediately game over. Knight e2 next, either, either knight e2 with a fork or the bishop is lost.
So f3 was played in the game, but this loses a pawn by force. Uh, he took with the pawn. If he takes with the knight, it's all the same. Uh, it will lead to the same thing. That would be on the transposition. So he took with the pawn, which allows the nice uh, blow knight x to f3. Now if the rook takes simply, uh, well then simply the, the bishop can take and after that some discovered attack or queen d4 check and queen takes b2, bishop c5 or queen d4 check and then discovered attack knight g4, plenty of, of bad things that ha can happen to uh, to the first player. So uh, why decided to take with the knight, queen d1, rook d1, bishop takes a three, rook e1 and the game goes on and on by force. Out of vintage bringing his pieces out with temples. The king definitely doesn't want to stand on on the on the x ring power of the rook. So white uh, defended with bishop b3, but then we have another pin, and white is also losing the exchange as a start as a start because if king to f2 there is knight g4 check that would be even worse. So he played bishop c5, rook e1 check. King f2 and one more brilliant blow by Aravind, rook takes to b1. He didn't stop for a second. Now everything is hanging. The rook is hanging and this rook is hanging, but white and the bishop is hanging, but white cannot take uh, all those pieces in just one move. So he played rook b1, but then fork, first knight fork. The bishop is gone. White is trying his last chance. The pin, but then another brilliant move. And another fork is in the air. If rook takes f3, then rook f3 and knight e5, another knight fork. So basically, uh, white played bishop e6 instead of uh, capturing the bishop on f3 and resigned after bishop c6. And that was only the beginning of this match. I just want to mention uh, to mention the the exciting performance by Chitambaram Arvind at this championship. He started. Uh, he didn't play the first game. And after that, he performed, uh, he won eight games out of nine. He lost only one, eight out of nine. The most result of Indian player. In the process, he managed to lift his rating above the 2500 mark. And this gave him a chance to become the next Indian Grandmaster. Thank you for your attention and see you the next time.